Hey, I'm Sage. And I'm Kat. And we live in this A-frame camper you see here behind us with our dogs, Kopek. And Quirks. I've been living in vehicles and RVs and that kind of thing for about four years now. Uh, two years for me. So we have about six years of combined experience living with pets in small spaces. Throughout those six years, we've kind of come up with ways to make life a little more manageable, to make uh, the experience better for us and for our pets. And uh, so today we're gonna talk about some of those tips that we have for making life enjoyable in a small space with a pet. It's important for all dogs, all animals that you're going to be living tiny life with, keeping them cool in hot temperatures is of extreme importance. Quirks actually has a heart condition that makes him more temperature sensitive, especially to heat. Um, it's one of the biggest concerns in our travels and any time the warmer months start to come around is keeping him cool. And the biggest thing that we have found for keeping him cool is evaporative cooling techniques. So we like to use um, wet bandanas tied around the neck or even cool ties, which are great. They're these little ties with moisture soaking beads in them. They end up staying damp for a really long time and keeping him cool. And we just use that with a USB fan aimed directly at him and a spray bottle to keep him wet as well. It's a really good technique for keeping him cool. Whenever possible, we try to park in the shade or if we're able to, somewhere near a body of water that is safe for them to be in so that we can keep the dogs cool. So another thing that you kind of got to think about frequently when uh, living in a small space with a dog is uh, stress and anxiety with your dogs. A lot of things can cause that. For some dogs, it's like driving. For others, it's loud noises. Um, Kopek here, uh, she used to be great with loud noises, didn't care about fireworks, gunshots, anything like that, but as she gets older, she becomes a lot, she's become a lot more sensitive to that, um, and it's created a lot of anxiety. In fact, just last night, there were, there were guns sh shooting somewhere nearby, and she was pretty stressed out about it. If you're, if you're living kind of off the grid, if you're traveling, if you're nomadic, uh, you'll find yourself pretty frequently in like gravel lots that sort of are unofficial, unofficial like shooting ranges. Um, and a lot of dogs are sensitive to noise like that, and so it's something to definitely uh, take into consideration um, when you are living in a small space with a dog. So to kind of calm Kopek down uh, when there are loud noises, we've been using CBD treats from uh, Scout and C, and they have worked wonders on her. They take about 30 minutes to kick in, and then she's pretty much good to go for the night, even if, if gun sounds continue. Um, CBD treats can also be good for things like, like joint pain and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of reasons you can use CBD treats. We are working in partnership with, with Scout and C. Um, they have the CBD treats as well as a lot of other dog supplements. Um, Copex also on a regimen of daily joint health as she's getting older and uh, skin and coat health. Um, and uh, we, love, we love the treats. They've worked really well for her for, for all three of those purposes. So if you have a dog who is maybe experiencing some anxiety or has some joint pain or, or you just want to kind of get them on a supplement regimen to keep their, their uh, general health up as they age, um, we have a discount code with Scout and C. You can use the code that's on the screen here or in the description when you're checking out and uh, it'll be a 10% discount for you. It does give us a, a kickback so we can also benefit from this. So we'd love it if you guys use that code um, and we actually highly recommend the products that Scout and C puts out. Yeah. Obviously dogs shed and dogs are dirty. Um, the thing about living in a small space is that all that same amount of dirt and all that same amount of hair is just condensed down into a smaller space. Um, so it's something that you definitely have to have to uh, consider. Uh, one thing that we, we use, especially for Kopech being kind of a longer hair dog, is a Furminator. It's a great tool to brush brush out the coat, brush out undercoats, especially during those, those shedding seasons. Um, and kind of you, you preemptively sort of uh, get the hair out of your space. You, you get rid of the hair before it can even get into the space. We also 
don't have a bathroom or shower or anything like that in here. So we try as often as possible to camp, park, recreate near bodies of water so that Kopec can jump in the water. Um, we can kind of scrub down Quirks. He's not a swimmer, but we can, we can scrub him down and kind of get him clean in lieu of a bath. And uh, we actually, I mean, neither of our dogs smell. Um, we don't feel like they need soapy baths all the time, but good rinses in fresh water is always a great way to keep your dog clean, keep your space clean. Last but not least, the thing that we always want to share and talk about, since we live full time with our dogs on the road and we are often camping around other people, is camp etiquette. It's always a good idea to be very familiar with the people who you're going to be camping with if they're going to be bringing dogs of their own. Know your dog's limits. Know their different levels of sociability. We are usually willing to be the first people to either leash up our dogs or put them in the camper if it's a situation where they may not be very well tolerated at camp. So for example, um, Quirks, Quirks has some vision issues and so he uh, takes a long time to adjust to new dogs. And the first time that Kat and I ever met, we went out camping and uh, she is, an incredibly good dog mom. She knows Quirks' limits and she's always monitoring to make sure that he's he's not putting himself or other dogs in situations that are gonna be dangerous. I've got a dog who doesn't really have any social problems and um, and to be honest, I've been kind of naive um, in the past about how I've treated Kopex's uh, uh, interaction with other dogs. And so the first time we met, I threw Kopec into the back of Kat's car uh, <laughs> with Quirks in the back there. Quir Quirks had never met. Kopec before and we were very fortunate that it was a good situation but now that I've spent like years with Quirks I realize how dumb that was and how <laughs> unaware I was of the situation so if you've got a dog at camp uh, just don't just be aware of your dog's behavior but be aware of the other dog's behavior um, because you just never know how other dogs are going to react and it's better to play it safe it's going to be better for you better for all dogs involved. Best to set them up for success however you can is kind of my motto whenever we are interacting out with the public with our dogs. Also, last but not least, we try to practice leave no trace as much as possible and that does include picking up after your dog whenever you leave a campsite. It happens too often that we get to a campsite and Kopec might find some old poop and she happens to like snacking on that stuff and it's pretty gross, Yes. but it almost never fails there is poop that is left behind and we do our best. We are not always perfect, but we definitely do suggest that you always be ready and willing to pick up after your dogs before you leave camp. We typically will uh, kind of pick up poop as we see them pooping, but before we leave a campsite, before we vacate, we we both walk around with a dog poop bag on our hand and kind of do a last last scout and we'll pick up uh, any poop that we see, even if it seems like it's been there longer than, than we have. Um, it's, it's always good to just leave it better than you found it. So those are our tips for living in a small space or living nomadically with, with dogs. Uh, we hope that they were helpful. We hope that you learned something or got, got some useful information from them. If you guys are new to my channel, would love it if you liked this video or subscribe to my channel or both. I know this isn't the typical video that I put on this channel, but um, it's something that I'd like to do a little bit more. So if you guys like this video, let me know, um, send me a comment, whatever. Um, and maybe we can make more videos that are instructional like this. See ya!